at the time. I was blind, but now I see. Working jobs we hate, so we can buy shit we don't need. Ideas are grateful. If you had one shot, everything I'd ever read, heard, seen was now organized and available. We're not your fucking khakis. Life moves pretty fast. The Biohacking Secret Show. Daniel Dubon is an internationally recognized expert in EMF radiation, EMF shielding, and EMF-related health issues with a special focus on the effect of exposure from mobile devices such as laptops, tablets, and cell phones. Dubon's concern regarding the health impact of EMF emissions grew from over 30 years of engineering experience in the telecommunications industry, where he held a variety of executive positions at SAIC, Telecordia, AT&T, and Bell Labs. Debon is the co-founder and CEO of Defender Shield, a company known as the trusted worldwide expert in EMF radiation education and protection. He also co-authored a book with his son and COO of Defender Shield called Radiation Nation, The Fallout of Modern Technology. Daniel Debon, welcome to the Biohacking Secrets Show. Anthony, thanks so much for inviting me. I'm really excited to chat with you about this subject and share sort of the things we know and the things you should worry about and the things you shouldn't. Uh, so I'm excited. Thank you again for inviting me. I'm excited as well. So let's let's start for the people who are not as familiar with some of the research that exists around the health effects and the impact of this electromagnetic soup we've we've surrounded ourselves with over the past 15 or 20 years. What, what are some of the things that you have seen that have uh, validated your, your creation of some of these products and the, the necessity for keeping people protected from, uh, from EMF radiation? Anthony, uh, let, me, let me tell you how I got started. Uh, you, you read my bio, but... In that bio, there's tits of, uh, tidbits of information that gives you sort of a sense of my expertise. I ran the laboratories in the Bell system on technical equipment. I wrote standards for the industry, and then I analyzed. So I was pretty familiar with this communications infrastructure that we talk about every day. And I used to look at electromagnetic radiation as an interference to other equipment, never did I think there was an interference with a person. And here I was pretty much considered an expert or the expert in these spaces. So it, several years ago, uh, my sons were visiting. My, my, my wife uh, says, you can't keep that laptop on your lap for so long. It can't be good for you. And I looked at her and I said, no, that's that's not the power levels are so low. That can't be true. But because I'm a, from a medical a, a electrical mechanical engineering background, I said, well, let me take a quick look. And so I began looking 10 years ago about is there evidence that there could be potentially some dangers to the body? And, and quite honestly, I was quite surprised. There seemed to be a lot. For example, Back 10 years ago, we knew that after about three to four hours of exposure with a laptop on a lap, 20 to 25 percent of the male sperm becomes immobile. And my sons were using their laptop on their lap. And so I said, well, that's not good. Everyone has laptops on their lap. And and maybe there's a problem that we public doesn't know about. And and so at that time. I said, well, because I'm a mechanical engineer, I'll, I'll just design shielding for you. And I ended up literally creating a composite of materials to shield the laptop on the lap. And that's actually how I got into the shielding business. I was in the telecom business for years and years, but now I was applying some of my experience to, to the shielding. And so that was, that's where the journey began. Um, and I'll fast forward a little bit. And I, why did I write the, the book? Well, Radiation was written out of frustration. Uh, we were running a company and we were getting phone calls from people who were really very frustrated. They would, they would argue that when they get in front of a router, their head hurts, they, they, their eyes hurt, um, they, they, their body aches, um, they get disoriented, they're dizzy. And I, and I kept on saying, well, 
well, let's talk about maybe some of the things you can do to help that environment. Um, and so while, while doing that, I decided to write the book. There was no question whatsoever that there was an aggregate of study work over the last 10 years that clearly, clearly showed direct correlation with exposures to body response. Um, some of the argument is that it's not statistically significant. In other words, we have three or 400 people they look at and they say, look, they're hypersensitive. They, that, that's not significant. You have to look at 10,000, 15,000 to be able to say with a confidence level that, that that's a condition. But Anthony, all you have to do is look at the metadata. Metadata is the, you collect all the results of all these individual studies and the metadata shows clearly that there's a link. For example, over the last 10 years, the, 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 the brain has not had an increase in cancer. So people would argue that the cell phone uh, should be causing cancer, supposedly, and you should be safe. So then you go and you look at the study itself that made that claim. It turns out some parts of the brain have less cancer rates, but the frontal lobe has been increasing 2% per year, compounding every year for the last 10 years. And so that's pretty significant information that correlates um, the, the causal effect of uh, exposures. And, and for some of these things, like <clears throat> what you just, I'd never heard that about the, um, do you see the, the, the prefrontal cortex or the frontal lobe? Yeah, the, front, the frontal lobe. That's always where it is when the cell phone impacts. And, and so that's where we do a lot, a lot of our thinking, decision making, <laughs> uh, you know, right, exactly. uh, and, 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 and I think we'll, we'll get into the role of dopamine in this and, and how all of this can affect oh, yeah. our ability to think critically and, and analyze situations a lot like what is going on right now. Um, and, and we'll go there. But I think it, it's also good if you have um, we'll link to some of these studies for yeah. in the show notes for people that are curious to yeah. say, all right, yeah. I, wa I want to see where is this 2% uh, increase in, in cancer rates in the, in the uh, right. frontal lobe and compounding. So we'll provide that stuff for everyone if, if, if you're up for it. And uh, cause I know at the beginning, at least in my journey, I was a little bit skeptical. Oh, and yeah. then, and then I saw the Ramazzini study out of Italy. Italy and then <laughs> yeah, I saw I'm going to get to that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. It, keep going. Keep going. It, it turns <laughs> out that the national toxicity program was mm -hmm. 10 years which is a, a part of the, of the federal government, and they were charted to see if there was a link, a direct link in an epidemiology study. They sent like 25, 20, 30 million dollars. Mm -hmm. And so they set this epidemiology study up. They had, it was a controlled environment. And when I looked at how they, they set up the laboratory studies, these guys were smart. What, what they did is they said, I'm going to take the thermal impact out of our study, and I'm only going to show you biological impact. Mm. And uh, most people don't realize these guys were smart. And what they did in the study is they created the circumstances, and they were looking for statistical significance. And you heard me mention that before. Mm -hmm. In other words, the populations were large enough to be 95% confident that what the results show is real. Mm -hmm. So, and what, just out of curiosity, what what biomarkers were they tracking? Because thermal is easy. You you know you have a, a thermometer and you look at the effect of the the you know the impact, increase in heat on the tissue. Um, but what were they? Do you know what they were looking at in order to see if there was a connection with cancer and some of these yeah, other uh, mutated cells? They okay. were looking for cancerous cells. Literally, okay. they were diagnosing it based on the uh, the results of, as the um, as the participants died. Okay, and and, and so um, and so what what they found after this like ten year study, much to their chagrin, was there was statistical significance in frontal lobe cancer. There was statistical significance in heart cancer. Mm -hmm. So everyone in the business, myself included, we had no idea 
that that was true. Although we have definitely research that shows links uh, to to heart conditions, pal palpitations, other kinds of uh, evidence. So then that wasn't too good because all of a sudden we have a very large statistically significant database uh, of, of study work that clearly showed an elevated increase. Then came along the Ramazani Institute. Guess what? They had a large population. They had a lot of control. They were smart enough to eliminate the thermal impact. So what they showed literally was exactly what the NTP did. So both of them independently, Ramazani, by the way, is, is a, a consortium of laboratory researchers out of Italy that do this for a living. And so these were pretty qualified experts. And I got to point that out. These, these studies that are being done are, are, are some of the finest experts in their fields, in epidemiology and in, all, in other areas. So when, when they began directly showing correlated evidence that was statistically significant, and then when you look at all the uh, metadata, it's profoundly, uh, profoundly influential. Now, all of a sudden, that data is beginning to correlate to uh, all the other research that's been going on. And so this substantiation and association with the metadata in these studies, which, which is really beginning to come out of the research space and into the public. Mm -hmm. Not where we want it to be necessarily, but it, it's beginning to get there. And in fact, 5G is one of the triggers of that. And, and I'll, we'll talk about that, Anthony, because mm -hmm. it's important to understand what that stuff really is and what it's really not. I agree. Yeah. Daniel, do you remember the moment when you had the epiphany that this stuff is a validated threat to our health and longevity and performance? I, I do. Re remember, I ran laboratories with all these technologies in them, and I never thought about it at all. Ten years ago, all of a sudden it changed because I was no longer in the laboratories doing that work. And I was I had retired, actually, believe it or not, at a young age. And um, I began looking into this subject area and I couldn't find anybody who fully understood it, understood the technical side, understood the medical side and helped bridge, the, bridge that. So it becomes uh, common knowledge. Mm -hmm. And over time, um, after that time, my, my goal has been not only provide shielding, but it's also to educate. So we actually work with clinics now about the growing electromagnetic radiation hypersensitivity that's emerging. Anthony, 20% of the population in the, in the U.S., for, for that matter, the worldwide, is electric hypersensitive. That I, is, you know, I, I don't even like that term. I, I feel like it's almost a misnomer as we just as, as we've created this environment where there's a billion, billion times more radiation than even 100 years ago. And now we're making it seem like there is a, a flaw in the biology of the individuals who uh, feel that change. No, they're, they're the canary in the coal mine. They're, exactly. They're, 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 that's what they really are. Yeah. And we, we when we were working with the uh, our uh, customers we could show them and where they could put the technology, but we could never fix it. Mm -hmm. if, if you were electric hypersensitive, Anthony, you would continue being electric hypersensitive. Mm -hmm. It's only over the last few years that we're really getting a handle on what are the bio biomarkers for electric hypersensitivity? What is the triggers going on in the environment and the body that we should be aware of? And um, why now? Anthony, I, I tell the story you know, 10, 15 years ago, I had a cell phone, but I had no one to talk to mm -hmm. because none of my friends had a cell phone, right? Right. You fast forward to today, every child and every adult have a cell, a cell phone and they're not using it for 10 or 15 minutes. They're using it for hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And then we have all these other devices all around us. Mm -hmm. And so 
if you compare where we were 10 years ago, as you pointed out before, there's multiple orders of magnitude times more emissions in our environment. They call that the ambient environment. That is actually influencing our body. Up to this point, we've talked about cancer. But believe it or not, Anthony, I'm not worried about the cancer. I'm really worried about the neurological and the physiological and all the other aspects of of influence to the body from all of these devices around us. Daniel, so so am I. My father was diagnosed with Parkinson's in, in 2015. This is this is something that is dear to my heart. I had experienced alongside, I told this story on the episode I did with, with Ben Greenfield uh, on his podcast, the exact title that Ben chose, I don't remember, but it was something along the lines of bearded biohacking badass. And I talked about how my girlfriend had developed electro hypersensitivity, we'll call yeah. it that, just to keep communication simple. And I even started developing some symptoms, but I was compensating. I would wake up in the morning. I would go for, you know, a 20, 30 minute run. I'd get sunlight. I'd do breath work. <laughs> right. I was doing, you know, cold thermogenesis and, yeah. you know, getting in natural bodies of water and I was compensating, but it was hitting her really hard. Yeah. And that sort of opened my mind up to this. And, you know, I've been able to move past it, but I'm, I'm very interested in what, what you have seen. I, I, my theory is that this is something that's impacting far more people than we even realize, but it's outside of their awareness. The cause and effect relationship is something that they're not aware of. And as we see, you know, we talked a little bit about cancer. We talked a little bit about heart disease and, and cardiovascular problems, but the fastest growing cause of death is, as you, uh, as you alluded to, neurodegenerative disease, Alzheimer's, Absolutely. Parkinson's, dementia. We've got this situation where we're exposed to higher amounts of heavy metals. We know that these frequencies prevent us from detoxing those metals. There is an interaction between the frequencies and the metals in the body. And it's, it's creating this perfect storm that whether or not it is, um, it, it is coincidence or intentional is up for debate. We'll probably leave that outside of this podcast, but, um, it, 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 it's a challenge that we need to adapt to. And I really feel like we are entering into an era of not, it's no longer survival of the fittest. It is survival of the wisest. And right. we need to be nimble and we need to be able to compensate for these changes that have happened in a very short period of time. So, so Anthony, what you did is exactly what you should do. Having um, the hydration, Mm -hmm. uh, making sure your, uh, your, um, sleeping cycles, your, 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 uh, eating cycles, all of those things are at optimal because when they're not, you're more susceptible. When you use a cell phone to your head, it's not only penetrating your head, it's also suppressing immune, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Your immune system's being suppressed. Dr. Ali Johansson talks about what are the mechanical breakdowns from these emissions. And, and as you know, Anthony, the gut is like 80% of the control. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you have a gut, you know, for, for those who are listening, there, there are 10 times more bugs in your gut than there are cells in your body. You disrupt that pattern and you disrupt your ability to, to recover. They call that resilience. Um, and so like these kinds of exposures are already, if you have a, if you had a, um, a concussion, mm -hmm. um, you are more susceptible. In fact, when you talk with clinics who deal with this, they talk about concussion like symptoms. Mm -hmm. You have concussion like symptoms from electro hypersensitivity sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And and so here's a technical fact. Um, a cell phone is 1.6 watts per kilogram. I, I need to talk a little bit about it so you understand what I'm talking about. 1.6 watts per kilogram is the standard. It was mm -hmm. it was developed 18 years ago. US Army six foot males. Um, mm -hmm. 1.6 watts, two degrees increase in the thermal um, response around that area where the cell phone is and mm -hmm. penetrating two to uh, two inches, one to two inches. Mm -hmm. That's the standard. And these, these thermal images can be found online. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it, that's what the FCC standard is. It says, look how much it can penetrate. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, Anthony, 
97% of us don't fall into the six foot male model. Mm -hmm. We're women, we're children, we're thin as skulls, um, uh, soft of tissue. Um, and so all of a sudden, the standard was for thermal protection for only 3% of the population. Mm -hmm. And it certainly didn't address the biological impacts. Mm -hmm. So now, if you're concussed and you have 1.6 watts per kilogram transmitting, dot one watts can mutate the cell in the frontal lobe. Dot one watts. In other words, 15 times less power level of a standard cell phone can disrupt the cell in the frontal lobe. So, like, to, maybe, to, maybe to, that bothers some, but certainly if you're – if you have a concussion where the blood brain barrier is down, you are more susceptible than the average, which by the way, 30, 40% of us have. This episode is also brought to you by Buy Optimizers and the Biohacking Secrets Upgraded Digestion Package. So if any of you guys are dealing with suboptimal digestion, characterized by gas, bloating, your stomach feeling distended or like it's sticking out after certain meals, if you get sluggish, if you deal with constipation or diarrhea, you're going to want to pay attention because it usually comes down to one of three things being off. The first is low stomach acid production. The second is low enzyme production. And the third is gut dis dysbiosis, meaning you have too many of the quote unquote bad bugs in your gut and not enough of the good ones. And the Bio Optimizers Biohacking Secrets Upgraded Digestion Package addresses all of these root causes of suboptimal digestion. It's the best value you could possibly get if you are looking to take 30 days and turn your digestion completely around. And you can get that for just 177 bucks. It's usually 270 bucks by going to buyoptimizers.com forward slash biohacks. That's B I I O P T I M I Z E R S dot com forward slash B I O H A C K S to check out the exclusive biohacking secrets upgraded digestion package for just 177 bucks today. I want to make sure that I'm kind of summarizing this correctly. A lot of the safety studies were done at power levels that are much less than the phones that we are using today. They were done on people who are typically bigger than most of us. You know, right. I, I, I sort of fall into that. I'm, I'm, I'm six to 200 pounds, but a lot of people are not. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of these, the research that has been coming out in both human and animal studies show that the negative health effects in terms of cancer, heart disease, we're seeing stuff on with adrenal, thyroid, immune, as you mentioned, neurodegenerative disease, those happen at, at durations of time that are far less than any of us are using our technology in a given day. You know, usually it's, it's like the equivalent of like one or two hours of cell phone use at a lower power level. And yeah. most people's screen time is five, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine right. hours. Right. Yeah. R remember, all this stuff has not been around us very long. Mm -hmm. So our bodies are trying to figure out what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And these low levels are actually worse than high levels because the body's saying, I don't know what to do with this. And, and so it's sort of creating a, a, a when, when, you, when you see a bear and you run, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have a flight to that bear. Well, the body's responding too. It's, it's called CDR, uh, cell danger response. Mm -hmm. It's basically saying, and I, I hate, by the way, oxidative stress, but that's the starting point. Uh, it's really not oxidative stress. It's not the radical and the any any oxidants that are in balance. It's really the cell saying, "I don't want to talk to you anymore." To the to the neighbor, and that cascades in throughout the body, and it becomes worse and worse as as time goes on because the body is in a res in a in a flight mode basically. Mm -hmm. And now is that, does that tie into the growing incidence of autoimmunity that we're yes. seeing? That's why I introduced it because we, you know, we talk about ADHD, we, we talk about uh, ADD, we, we talk about uh, behavioral problems with kids in school. Um, a cell phone is 1.6 watts per kilogram. When you have a Wi-Fi in a classroom, it's not five watts. It's like one third the power constantly seven hours a day, day transmitted into the brains of these children. Mm -hmm. And so is there a correlation? We have evidence that's suggested, but it's not statistically significant yet. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And so you talked a little bit about that cell cell danger response. Is this um, n- neurosurgeon Dr. Jack Cruz talks a lot about our our uh, redox status, you know, our ability to um, basically like the amount of, of electrons in our body that are able to, to neutralize some of the, you know, oxidative stress or cell danger response and, and, and some of that. Um, how do you feel redox status fits into this equation if it does at all (laughs) yeah actually uh that felt like i was leading the witness (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, yeah, right no i didn't do it i didn't do it (laughs) um dr navel uh he's out of california over the last few years a a cell is a cell It, it reacts to the environment in a unique way to an external toxin. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't invent a different way of doing it every time it is impacted by an external influence. It could Mm -hmm. be hit in the head, by the way. It it could be a lot of things, whatever is threatening the cell. Mm -hmm. And so Dr. Naveau basically said, wait a minute, we actually can think about what the, the process is of what creates it and what maybe is the way you take that cell out of that danger. But um, uh, what you just mentioned as one of the um, suggested ways of the body responding is legitimate, but, th- but there are so many other things. Like for example, w- 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 if you're electric hypersensitive, I can guarantee you your, uh, your, uh, your, your, your copper zinc ratio is wrong. Mm-hmm. And so, you, in other words, you're going to have a lot of zinc in your body. And what test do you get to 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 look at that? Do you get a micronutrient test from like Genova? Or yeah. Is there- well, you got to be careful because y- yes, the answer is yes, and there, there are a lot of ways of doing that. But those are one of those. You, you, the reason I'm mentioning it is because you said something about the imbalance of the minerals. Mm-hmm. That's one of those imbalances that becomes obvious. Uh, I, I work with a doctor. He said, uh, he said to me, you know, when you eat a piece of broccoli uh, 50 years ago, you had 100 milligrams of iron in it. Mm-hmm. You eat uh, uh, broccoli today. Or, or, no, it was uh, uh, spinach. Uh, you eat spinach today and it's 10 milligrams. So, mm-hmm. so there is deficiencies and there's excess. Mm-hmm. You know, the zinc, the aluminum, uh, possibly that's, concentrating near certain parts of the body that are being impacted. If you're electric hypersensitive, you may feel pain in your right in the center, close to your heart. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's where the minerals concentrate. Mm -hmm. So, so there's really clinical evidence of certain things happening with those who are electric hypersensitive. Yeah. Uh, I I have a couple observations and these are, just that they're not they're not proven in studies but we do look at a good amount of labs and we work with people ranging from professional athletes to you know regular everyday folks who just want to look feel and perform their best and the patterns that i've seen in the past few years are as follows i've seen a huge increase in chronic viral infections like epstein barr cytomegalovirus you yep. know the herpes and hepatitis yep. family which which my hypothesis is related to immune senescence in part Absolutely. due to some of this exposure, I'm seeing a tremendous amount of what I've started calling iron dysregulation. <laughs> it's not necessarily like low iron or high iron. It's like the things aren't behaving properly. You've got right. either super high ferritin or super low ferritin, or it's almost right. like the iron is acting like, like right. you would expect a hormone to act if there was hormonal resistance, if there was inflammation in the body. So people are experiencing almost like anemia like symptoms, yeah. but they're not on paper a anemic. Um, as you mentioned, some of those nutrient imbalances, super low magnesium, I believe because the body's trying to neutralize some of the damage that's, that's taking place. And we've got sulfur, sulfur, trace minerals, um, and, and electrolytes, all of these things. And what I kind of wanted to ask you was, 
When you look at some of the symptoms that are being attributed to the viral outbreak that is that is uh, taking place right now, you know, with COVID-19, they're talking about hypoxia. They're talking about some of these issues that pertain to um, hemoglobin and iron um, and, and, and energy production in the body. Have you noticed any connection between those symptoms attributed to COVID and some of the symptomology that can occur from exposure to EMF? Hypoxic conditions are one of the impacts to the body, uh, if you like a hypersensitive, by the way. Yes. Uh, so um, why? And so there is a question of why, but it's certainly known. Um, mm -hmm. Let me answer the question. This is a very important issue. Mm -hmm. um, for, I, I need to talk about what 4G is and less. Yes. And then and I'm going to talk about 5G, and I'll, I'll explain to you why it may or may not be true. And, and Daniel, if we can, without making communication complicated, my goal is to as much as we can avoid the use of uh, the, you know, the C word, the viral yes. outbreak taking on. Oh, absolutely. In, in, I, I, in, I don't in, need to talk about it. In combination with what we're discussing, but I do feel that there may be a connection. We can talk about it very clearly and it's very precise. Okay. Uh, up to 4G, we have a digital signal being transmitted in a wave form from a near term to a far end location, a tower to a cell phone. It is on and off, on and off, on and off. When you talk about a breakdown of the cell, uh, the calcium channel breakdown in the cell, you talk about the weakness of the membrane to that constant pulsing at the cell itself. It penetrates the cell, oxide builds up, other chemical things happen, and all of a sudden you have um, a DNA damage or a mutated cell, a strand of DNA, all that kind of stuff. So, so that for, is a, for people that wanted to dive more into that. Check out the work of Dr. Martin Paul on Paul, the that's what, yeah, calcium he's, channels. He's, Dr. Dr. Joseph Mercola shared a lot of that. The, yep. the research is very clear. You can go to the studies if you're at all skeptical and you like rolling up your sleeves and getting into the research. Please continue, Daniel. <laughs> I love Dr. Powell because he shows the mechanical breakdown mm -hmm. before his work. No one really knew the breakdown of the cell. So mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate what he's done as a biochemist. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so um, when, uh, uh, what were we talking about? You're talking about the mechanical breakdown of the lipid bilayer of the cells. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Voltage gated right. calcium channels. Right. So we, we, so we got that up to 4G. It's a pulsing signal on and off, on and off, on and off. The power level is 1.6 watts at the, far, uh, at the cell, uh, from the cell phone. And so like that's how the cells are breaking down. That's why the body is, uh, has suppressed immune. Mm -hmm. Now you go to 5G. What is 5G? There's, I'll break it down into two areas. There's sub six gigahertz. Um, a, a, a hertz is one cycle in one second. A cell phone works between one and two gigahertz, one to two billion cycles per second, pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. It's that if I take a 10,000 pound load and, and a, a, on a steel bar on a piece of concrete and I don't lift and lift the concrete, uh, the, the weight up, the concrete won't break. If I take 10,000 pounds, lift it up, up and down, up and down, it breaks the concrete. Mm -hmm. That is a dynamic breakdown of the cell because of the nature of the, um, the, um, the load. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening with the cell phone, uh, yeah, the cell, uh, using a cell phone. Um, and now you want to know what 5G is relative to 4G. Well, guess what? Most of the 5G you see today is all sub six gigahertz. It's all at the 2.4 gigahertz. It's a six to nine megahertz. It's all fairly low. It's been around us a long, long time. It's just the allocation to the telecommunications communications has just been opened up by the FCC. 
So most of what you see is sub six gigahertz, not the millimeter stuff everyone's panicking about. Um, the only time you have the millimeter stuff, the small cell site stuff, is when you have a cell tower in front of your house. Mm -hmm. Typically, the last leg of the communication, and those are the ones that are between 20 to 60 gigahertz. Actually, it can go up to 300 gigahertz, but it's the 20 to 60 gigahertz that is now emerging from the small cell site. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Most of what you hear about is there a link doesn't exist because most of 5G that's out there is sub six gigahertz. Mm -hmm. It's not even the millimeter stuff everyone's worried about. So a lot of the talk about 60 gigahertz is if you're in close proximity to one of the 5G towers, does does this the include small cell site towers, the ones in front of your house? Not okay. the ones at the stadiums, not the ones that are for the cars. They're using stuff that's been around for a long, long time. Now, what, what about, I've, I've heard that with 5G, the range is much smaller, so they need to be putting this everywhere, like integrating it with street lights and you know, on, on different corners and everything like that. Where does that fit into this? The great, you're a great leading questionnaire. <laughs> here, here, here's the answer. Uh, the, the 20 to 60 gigahertz, which is really the stuff that's going to be out here shortly, is from the small cell sites, the thing in front of your house. Because when you go really, 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 really fast, you can go really, really, really only short. So a cell, a 4G cell phone can communicate with a small, a 4G cell tower miles because the signal can go that far mm -hmm. when you go really 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 fast you can go 750 feet mm -hmm. so every 750 feet you're going to have a cell tower a small cell site into your house and that's the last mile that's where you get all the broadband advantages you know you you don't need a cable service anymore you're going to be able to get it wirelessly all the speeds connecting to everything in your house all that stuff is really around the small cell site now um the importance of that is not only is it really really fast going really really short but all of a sudden you have to jack up the power at the small cell site to get only 750 mm -hmm. feet. So if you have a cell tower, for example, um, two miles away, it's 60 watts. That's what they transmit at, 60 watts. This new 5G cell, uh, small cell site is 20 watts. So if you're in the front of your house and your tower is 15 feet away, the power level is going to drop real fast, as, as you know, Anthony. But while it's passing you to go to your wife's phone, you may have five watts, seven watts of power to a very, very fast signal. So all of a sudden, that millimeter stuff may be different than the current cell phone transmission rates because all of a sudden it's a much higher power level and it's much faster. So if the we were going to br break this down for like a fourth grader, what's sort of the gist of what you're saying? Cause I'm, I nerd out on this stuff and I'm still with the wattages and the power right. levels and everything like that. I'm having trouble making, I'm like, is it bad? Is it good? Tell me, is it bad? Is it good? If not, it's not, a not, so, not, not so good. It's not, not so, so good. good right? Okay. And, and remember I talked about the elephant on the, on the, uh, uh, the steel bar, mm -hmm. one pinging, mm -hmm. one uh, on off, on off signal, digital signal. Now, now two, they call that beaming. They mm -hmm. beam the, to the target. They can, uh, using phase arrays, they can actually concentrate the, the signal directly to the cell phone. So that's a different and unique uh, technology that hasn't existed before either. Mm -hmm. So now you have power levels that are high and you have multiple sources. They call it MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. So, so now you have two conditions that didn't exist in cell. 
do we know what's going to happen with it? No, no, no studies have been done. Mm-hmm. So we really don't know. But I can tell you this. At 20 gigahertz, your bugs in your stomach love it as 4G and below. We remember we talked about your immune. We yes. know that they propagate. The bad when, ones. The, the bad ones propagate. Yeah, this isn't like good for digestion. Right. This isn't, this isn't <laughs> right. like a probiotic. We're t- <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. We're, we're, talking, we're talking about candida and fungal and yeast infections. We're, right. we're right. talking about pathogenic inflammatory bacteria <laughs> right. that, right. that, that it, it, you know, keep us from getting deep, restful sleep and recovering from our workouts and thinking clearly. And as you mentioned, having an immune system that functions. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's a very clear connection here between not just the proliferation of pathogenic uh, bacteria and, and, and fungal infections, but also the amount of biotoxins they produce. And, and there is a, a, a direct relationship between mold exposure in homes and, as uh, Dr. Diedrich Klinger has pointed out, a 600 times increase in mold biotoxins. These are oh, the absolutely. actual toxins. From they love it. They love it. All of this. So all of that is going to increase if we don't have strategies to protect. We them. speculate that it yes. will increase. Yeah. I have seen research that clearly states bad bugs like it. Mm-hmm. So, yes. um, uh, but there's been literally no study work whatsoever in this. And I'm sure you've heard of um, when they do crowd control, um, they yes. use 90 gigahertz. Mm-hmm. And and the reason you run is because your sweat glands are like little antenna mm-hmm. and they love 90 gigahertz. They resonate at 90 gigahertz. And as, so as are as our a, mitochondria. Little. Right, oh, that's another that's a whole nother thing. Right. <laughs> and, and so it loves it and it heats it up. That's mm-hmm. why you get hot and run. Mm-hmm. So we, we do know. There's interference at 60 gigahertz with uh, oxygen. We know we know a lot of those stu- things, but we really don't know for sure what the actual impacts will be because there's really not much out there yet to really be able to get modeling uh, those kinds of uh, conditions. D- Daniel, I have three questions. The first is about, um, well, I'll kind of take them one, one by one and we'll kind of rapid fire to because people are taking this. I don't want to, I don't want to just scare people. I want to oh. kind of give them actionable, actionable, not that we're doing that, you know, but I think it's important to, for, to, to kind of catch people up to speed. And like, this is, if your electromagnetic environment sucks, you're not going to solve this problem with probiotics or prebiotics. No. It may put a little bit of a dent in it, but yes. it's, you, you got to really get to the root cause. And there is an electromagnetic root cause in almost all of these cases. So we're, we're seeing, um, I'm, I'm not going to name any names, but there are some colleagues that I'm close with uh, that are in the uh, California um, construction uh, industry. And they're seeing a rapid rollout of 5G as all of this is going on. Hundreds of millions of dollars of contracts through uh, companies like, uh, I'm, I'm not even going to name any companies because I don't want to make myself don't a target. Yeah, but um, hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts. He was awarded one of them. So he's seen this from the inside. And there's um, th- this is taking place while everyone is on lockdown. What options do we have? Because it seems like this is being done intentionally and it's being done very fast while our options to do something are taken away. And while we, uh, you know, before we even have the safety studies to, to, um, we we actually have the studies showing it's not safe, but they're doing it. What What are the precautionary measures you have? What's stopping someone from, if, if I say, I don't want to be around this stuff, I've, let's say I own my house and my neighbor goes, yeah, you want to pay me 5,000 bucks a month? You can put one of these in my property but that's right. affecting me now. What can we do? Before I answer that question, the 5G that's being deployed out of California is sub six gigahertz. Mm-hmm. It's next to 4G and below. So mm-hmm. it's adding into the environment additional frequencies that didn't exist two years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's that change more so than the millimeter change that's actually happening. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to start there. Now let's answer your question. You control your environment. 
The FCC doesn't control your environment. The state doesn't control your environment. The only one that controls your environment is, is you. You own the, 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 you have the responsibility to take precautionary measures if you consider this a problem. Some of us do, some of us don't. I personally do. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't need to buy products I produce. Mm-hmm. If you're diligent about understanding your environment, you can actually reduce the exposure levels to the extent where they're more likely not going to interfere with your body and the body response to these emissions. This episode of the Biohacking Secrets Show is brought to you by Veritas Farms and their full line of CBD products, CBD standing for cannabidiol. Now, we are real excited about this partnership because Veritas means truth in Latin, and we are big believers in bringing you guys the truth, not just through this podcast, but by making sure that any products that we share or that we bring on as sponsors are products that we personally use, believe in, and endorse ourselves. And that is the case with Veritas Farms and their full line of of CBD products. The reason that they're so great, they are full spectrum hemp products, meaning that they have all of the beneficial phytonutrients that you get in a quality CBD product. 99% of the CBD products on the market are CBD isolate, and they're just being resold, meaning they're coming from a few small manufacturers. They've only got one tiny part of all of the important phytonutrients that you need to get the benefits you want from a CBD product, and they're just a bunch of different companies reselling them. Veritas Farms is vertically integrated, meaning they own the farm. They ensure that there are no pesticides being added. It's organic. And then they control the entire process from harvesting to extraction until that product ends up at your door. That's what I love it. It's kind of like farm to table, but for CBD. And the benefits that I've noticed, my sleep is better. I feel like I get a deeper, more restful night's sleep. I'm less stressed. I never have periods of anxiety. I feel calm and focused throughout the day. And it even decreases in inflammation when I have flights or other things where inflammation is an inevitable part of life. You take a little extra CBD and it can be very helpful for stress, anxiety, sleep, and that inflammation. So if you guys want to check it out, we've arranged a 15% discount for you guys. To get that, you can go to theveritasfarms.com forward slash biohacks. I'll spell it out. T-H-E-V-E-R-I-T-A-S-F-A-R-M-S.com forward slash B-I-O-H-A-C-K-S to save 15%. Check out the Veritas Farms CBD. You guys are going to absolutely love it. When you're talking to someone at, at, a, at a, an event or a conference and they say, give me like the top three things that I should do. What do you tell them? Get the laptop off your lap. Uh, okay. You know, take your laptop and put it in the corner of your, your, uh, your desk, have it connect to a monitor, mm-hmm. get a keyboard, and all of a sudden connect it to Ethernet mm-hmm. rather than using your Wi-Fi. And you have eliminated what I refer to as those bees in the room that were producing emissions that could influence you. Uh, you have a cell phone. It has a Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and self-transmitter plus GPS. You have four transmitters. Do you need four transmitters? No. Turn off the ones you don't need, and you reduce the number of bees in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, you do what I suggested around your desk and your laptop. You reduce those bees in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, in general, you want to make sure that if you can wire your 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 home, the you, the things you control, mm-hmm. you do. Yep. If you want a Wi-Fi, make sure you turn it off at night at a minimum. Yeah. You mm-hmm. get a ten dollar oh. timer, right? Ten dollar timer. Have it get on at seven o'clock in the morning. Turn off at eleven o'clock at night. While you sleep in the in the circadian rhythm is not disrupted and and you, you're going to sleep better, turn it off for ten dollars. It mm-hmm. doesn't take much to do it. In other words, you're managing your environment. Um, also associated with that, by the way, is time and distance. Mm-hmm. Um, if you use your cell phone, Anthony, for for five minutes, you will be fine for the rest of your life. If you use it hours a day directly to your head Mm -hmm. after 10 years you're 10 times more likely no three times more likely to get cancer of the frontal lobe Mm -hmm. three times 
because of heavy use. So you're, you're talking about a, you're three hundred percent more likely to get brain cancer for ten years heavy use. So mm-hmm. the, the 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 duration of use is really important. You want to bring if you choose to use devices, make sure they're not around you in use close to your body as often as you can. So what's what's what do they consider heavy use? Because we now have screen timer on our phone. We know how long we're using it if we if we check in there. Are we talking about two hours a day, five hours a day? What's heavy use? Heavy use close to your it's when it's close, right? It's yeah. after about 15 minutes, by the way. And if, if you have a cumulative use of an hour to two hours a day, it's beginning to get heavy use. So you want to reduce that use. But the other dimension of time is duration. Uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, distance. Mm-hmm. When, 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 when I have a cell phone to my head, 100% of the potential danger is being directed right into my head. If I take it a foot or two away, mm-hmm. 80% of that danger is gone. Mm-hmm. If I put it four foot away, 98% is gone. In other words, when you use your cell phone, use it, put it down, and put it at least four foot away from you. Mm-hmm. That simple action is, is reducing your exposure dangers. Um, wiring That's- your house is simple stuff. There's Huge. simple things you can do. I, I, fe- I feel like that is a necessary step now. I used to tell people, oh, yeah. unplug unplug your Wi-Fi at night. I don't think it's enough anymore. And especially no. like what, what you just said is most most everyone listening to this, you know, in, in, unless they've been listening to our other episodes or they're a part of, part of our tribe and, and in our program, they qualify as someone who is using their cell phone heavily. Yeah. meaning they're no putting question. it up to their head and it's more than one or two hours a day. Right. And now with the iPhone having been released in 20, uh, 2007, we're over the 10 year mark. Yeah. And we're getting into that territory where if, if you're listening to this and you don't make adjustments and, and encourage your loved ones to do that, it could potentially um, become something more serious. And that's not to scare you. That's to keep this real so that, so that you're hopefully inspired to make some adjustments in your life. Absolutely. Anthony, I was on a, I was on a podcast, really, really bright lady, really, really bright lady. And I said, one of the most important things you should do is treat your bedroom as a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. You never have cell phones. You you, you don't have tablets. You don't have anything in that environment that is transmitting. Mm -hmm. You take your clocks and you move them at least four foot away from you. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's a sanctuary. And she was saying, oh, thank you so much for that information. I really, really appreciate it. She called me back about a month later and she said, Dan, my husband and I are sleeping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she didn't believe what I was saying to her, right? Because as we haven't talked about it, the melatonin is, is not only being disrupted by the pineal, uh, excuse me, the uh, um, uh, uh, cryptochrome protein in the back of the eye because of the blue light. It's mm-hmm. also, it's also interfering with the, the, the system function of creating melatonin mm-hmm. in the body. So you want that stuff away from you. So you get that sleep that you need. So your mitochondrial rebuilds because that's when it does. Right. Yep. As you know. Yep. So to kind of summarize three steps with the Wi-Fi. Um, and we have these for, for people who are a part of our coaching program and really want to go deeper. Um, you can learn more about that at biohackingsecrets.com. And, and we've got all the steps that I've taken, but quick summary, take your Wi-Fi at a minimum, 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 unplug that thing at night, but ideally switch over to ethernet and make sure using like an ENV RD 10 meter or something like that to measure the radiation that it's not transmitting. I can't tell you how many stories we have of people, including my own family and myself who have switched to ethernet and the, 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 the telecom companies and internet service providers, when they do a reset, even though you can't connect to your modem, it's still transmitting. And you would never know unless you had a 
a meter. So switching to Ethernet is huge. But if, if you don't take that step now, at, at least unplug your Wi-Fi at night, put your phone in airplane mode um, or at a yep. minimum, turn off the stuff that you're not using. So you don't have all four of those different transmitting uh, transmitters going at the same time. And uh, the third one was with, so my laptop set up right now, just to give you guys an idea, I've got a stand that has elevated. It's about three and a half feet away from me. It's plugged into an ethernet connection. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth have been turned off. Right. <laughs> and um, that's, and, and, and my phone is next to me in airplane mode. So that's kind of like a quick idea of the setup that we have here and, and a way to apply this. I think those, those are fantastic tips. Um, if someone wanted to get, if someone wanted to look at their labs or if they came to you, Dan, and they said, um, I want to see if my biology has been adversely impacted by exposure to EMF. What tests and what labs do you look at in order of descending importance? Actually, um, we're now a couple of years ago. Um, I couldn't find any clinics that even understood what electric hypersensitivity was. Mm -hmm. And um, recently I, I work with a, a clinic out in uh, Portland and um, he has a tribe himself. And he went from realizing after he read my book, he was electric hypersensitive to now treating electric hypersensitive. He actually has people walk into his clinic that can't even walk. They, they're electrical engineers. They, 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 they have exposures that are excess, you'd say. And he takes them from um, not being able to walk to resilient. In other words, balance is improved. Um, pineal gland is cleaned up. Uh, there's a lot of stuff they do to do that. Um, and, and so, um, there is a protocol that they use. Believe it or not, uh, Anthony, you can be walking and your brain pattern is asleep. Mm -hmm. You could be sleeping and your brain pattern is awake, alpha, beta, all the, uh, the, the control functions of the body influencing mm -hmm. how you feel. So what they do is they literally balance the brain. They use, there's several different tools to do it, but brain taps the one th that I think is the right one. What, what is that? Brain tap. Brain tap, is that similar to like uh, transcranial magnetic yeah, stimulation? Yeah, right, the same thing. Dr. Porter is a business associate that I, I have, had the pleasure of working with. And uh, I, I actually have an appointment for TMS uh, right now that I have postponed because I'm enjoying this conversation. I'm gonna call, <laughs> I'm gonna call them when we're done and tell them I'm running late. Can I still come in? <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing 36 sessions and then going on maintenance because I feel like, anyway, we won't go into it, but yes, keep going, please. Brain tap. So, so, so brain tap is like so important because it's the control of the body, right? And, and if it's out of control, the brainstem, which is the, el the oldest part of the body, mm -hmm. in a sense, that's disrupted a little bit. You need certain parts of that brainstem to control the recovery of the mitochondrial mm -hmm. cell, right? And so all of a sudden, you got to get that. You got to get that right. Mm -hmm. Then they go to the gut. Mm -hmm. They look for um, a leaky gut. They, they look for other symptoms that may be associated. They, as I mentioned to you, they, they, they look for the, uh, the mineral balance. The, the, and by the way, they won't let you into their clinic if you don't drink right, eat right. They just won't let you in because it's so important for the recovery of mm -hmm. these patients. We, we won't have anyone that's dealing with with any form of mystery illness or chronic illness before we even have gone in and really done the diagnostics and right. testing before we let them into our program, we make sure that they are willing to do whatever it takes. And that may include making some, some big shifts to their environment. Yeah, absolutely. And, and another thing they do, by the way, is they buy, they man, uh, monitor bio uh, biomarkers, blood pressure, blood pressure variant. They, 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 they look at, a bunch of stuff while you're sleeping, while you're awake. Uh, 
Uh, a big part of the recovery, by the way, is their sleep. They have become experts in helping their patients sleep. But they stabilize the brain, and then they bring nutrients um, to the body. And there's a lot of ways they do it. I like that. So basically, they they make sure the person is on board to fix their environment. Let's talk about decreasing their exposure, creating right. distance. Then there's that uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation or brain tapping to kind of get the brain firing uh, the way that it was designed. Again, they start fixing, addressing leaky gut, repopulating the gut, right. probably decreasing some pathogens if there's Absolutely. been overgrowth that exceeds the immune system's ability to maintain right. homeostasis, restore mineral balance, and then optimize their sleep. That's the way they do it. Believe it or not. I like that. I like that. And do you, do you, um, is, do we have a, a, an individual or a clinic? Dr. Name? Court. Do- Dr. Court. Yeah. Doc, Dr. C-O-R-T? Court. C-O-R-T? Uh, K-O-R-T. K-O-R-T. And, yeah. And he has a, a K2 uh, pinnacle health. He only deals electric hypersensitive. He's amazing. He yeah. has, I've I've seen him take people who couldn't walk. I, honestly, it was terrible how bad it was for him, and it was electric hypersensitivity. I'd love to I'd love to talk with him about this and and go deeper. This is yeah. Well, I'll I'll get you in touch with him because appreciate I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, it was such amazing that I could find someone because I was very frustrated because I'm a mechanical engineer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what do I know about that space? Mm-hmm. I needed experts really to help guide us. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so if for someone listening, and, and of course, you know, selfishly for me, um, let's let's cover both of these scenarios, right? So for someone listening who hasn't made a lot of adjustments, um, what are some of the, the products and things that, that you've created that can help them? And then uh, same question, but for someone like me who, you know, is has been Ethernet for, uh, you know, three and a half years, who's, you know, Pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty diligent about uh, morning sunlight and movement right. and, my, and right. my, my meal timing for, for retuning circadian biology and all of that. And then what are the products that would, that would be most beneficial for someone like me? So someone who's kind of new to this and then someone who's pretty deep in it. Um, you want to, you, you use a cell phone, you should, you, you should use protection. Okay. Um, if you have it to your head, you should always use protection. Okay. I wouldn't use my cell phone until I came up with shielding for it, by the way. Mm. I just put it four foot away. Yeah. Now I, I don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not going to throw my cell phone away. Mm -hmm. So I know I should probably find a way of using it without, and minimizing the impacts of somebody like you. I'd suggest earbuds. Mm Mm-hmm. The kind I use, uh, we, we, we took the electrical part and do a conversion and we create an acoustical link between the ear and the speaker uh, in the conversion. So we eliminate all emissions that are around the head completely. Now, are those, is there a big difference between those earbuds and say like the, the wired earbuds that come with your cell phone from, um, from, from like Apple? Okay, good is um, where you use your hand. Better is where you use a wired connection. Best is eliminate the electrical connection if you can. So it's a sequence. There is not a substantial difference, but there is enough if you're electric hypersensitive you feel it okay so, so you, cell phone case headphones right what next um if you're hypersensitive you want the blanket yeah um, you, you really do because we've fr- we've learned from experience actually we l- l- if you're pregnant in the first trimester we have research that shows Heavy exposed ambient environments of RF, you're three times more likely to have a miscarriage in the first trimester. So our goal was to cover the and protect the, the womb of, of the woman that, that had conceived. That was the sort of the thought. And then what we found out is if you're electrohypersensitive, 
even the ambient in the room is bothering you. Mm -hmm. And by covering yourself, it really calms your body down. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure I understand the physics of it, but I know from use it's happened to so many now. Um, uh, so I would suggest the blanket. Um, okay. The, the um, I'm I'm pretty excited about the blanket actually. I'm telling for, you, look, are you travel sleeping, travel. Yeah, yeah. A actually, for travel is like a big deal because yeah. you go into the air air aircraft, right? Mm -hmm. Or the Wi-Fi transmitters in the room, or the cell phone transmitters. It's like it, you're being bombarded, right? You're in a metal tin can too. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like crazy. <laughs> it's being contained. <laughs> you're inside the uh, the um, the cage, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So, oh, uh, we have we haven't talked about this, but I'm really, really, sort of. I think it's really important to understand that the blue light component of mm -hmm. your monitor is is pretty serious. It, mm -hmm. We know it causes premacular generation. We know. We know it causes dry eye. We know all those things. It, 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 mel the melatonin signaling, as you mentioned, that's oh, one of the yeah, biggest. The, the cryptochrome. It, it yep. literally prevents the switch from going on. Mm -hmm. right, so, but it's more than that because it all connects to the pineal gland, right? Mm -hmm. And so in cell phones and stuff into the pineal gland influence directly through RF. Actually, it's visible light, right? You know that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, light is electromagnetic radiation mm -hmm. blue light is a high intensity electromagnetic coming off an led and so it's penetrating the eye it's screwing around with the uh cryptochrome but then it's continuing mm -hmm. it can influence your balance believe it or not mm -hmm. so we're beginning to learn a little bit more recently that it's more than we thought mm -hmm. because it's a window to the brain essentially yes yes you be careful about mm -hmm. and so when you're traveling it's one of those kinds of things you really want to do during the day. If you're electric hypersensitive, you can actually wear it and you feel better because mm -hmm. you're you're sensitive to even natural blue light mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of reasons. And, and you know, our, our pineal gland, we start getting a little bit into the esoteric, but there's, you know, for thousands of years, there have been connections made between the pineal gland and, and that being our third eye, our sense of, oh, yeah. um, along with what's going on in our microbiome, our, our intuition, our gut instinct, our ability to connect with our higher self and right. make good decisions. So as we do these things that affect our pineal gland, that, that tank our dopamine signaling and increase our risk of neurodegenerative disease and, and, and and cancer of the our, our decision making center, the uh, the frontal lobe of the brain, we get ourselves in situations where our decision making is compromised. And yeah, yes. yeah ab absolutely. Yale just released a study about the susceptibility of pineal gland. If it if if it has um, fluoride mm -hmm. and a two dot four gigahertz Wi Fi transmitter, and it has a mutated cell. A, a, a ge genetic cell disorder, you're three times more likely to have cancer of that mm -hmm, in time. Mm -hmm. So we, we know these things are being influenced. Um, and so, and the, again, as you just pointed out, the pineal gland is no, as is the thyroid, by the way, right? The thyroid's here, you're using the cell phone here. Like, like there's a lot of close stuff going on and mm -hmm. there's interference with the thyroid, which controls a lot of the, the uh, balance of the body is absolutely well. and 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 we we open ourselves up to these very probable domino effects where you create a situation of immune senescence through a suboptimal electromagnetic environment, right? Then you get this overgrowth of Epstein-Barr. The Epstein-Barr likes your thyroid, you know, your liver, and, right, and, right. and and then you start creating other problems that don't go away if you just improve your environment. Now you got to have a strategy absolutely. to unwind those as well. So no this question. is why I'm I'm a huge fan of of what you guys are doing at, at Defender Shield, Daniel. And guys, if you're listening and you haven't taken some of these steps, take them today. Don't let any more time pass between you know the acquisition of this information and the implementation of it. And go to DefenderShield.com. 
pick up some of the blankets for you and your loved ones. I'm going to get one for myself and my brother, maybe even my dad and, um, and, and, and throw it on the bed and have it when I'm chilling out and bring it with me when I'm traveling. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to get a cell phone case too. I'm pretty diligent about always being in an airplane mode, but when I do need to use it and uh, I'm, I'm not being the weird guy using my phone with a pair of he- uh, used with a pair of headphones and a selfie stick, I'm going to have, I'm going to have a defender shield case on there. And hey, uh, Anthony, don't yeah. forget, go yeah. to the cell, the web- website. I have a learning section. Yeah. I've got 10 pages of telling you what 5G really is. Mm-hmm. I, I show you all the research that's been done. Yeah. Um, I show you the evidence that you may want to look at and decide to yourself if it's for you or not. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've personally seen enough. I, I've, I'm, I'm going to pick up your book and, and, and rip through that. I've seen it on Amazon a number of times, you know, it was, it was suggested when I was, uh, you know, cause, cause I was looking at uh, Dr. Mercola's book EMF and, um, highly recommend that as well for, for, for the people that are enjoying this and finding some of this to be a skill set that is worth developing and, and, you know, going, going deeper on, um, Daniel, this has been fantastic. What are, are there any parting words or recommendations that you have for the listeners that go beyond anything that we have covered or, um, you know, that are on a macro level, important things that you really feel need to be communicated? You're the architect of your own destiny. Mm-hmm. You control your own environment. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't, you would not let a welder into your house that's in one corner and a 55 gallon drum of gas with uh, uh, toxic fumes coming out of the gas, the volatile organic compounds and have a Wi-Fi in your back. Why? They are all three to be carcinogenics. Mm-hmm. You've got, you would not have that there close to you. Why would you have a Wi-Fi close to you? Mm-hmm. Uh, these things are well, Daniel, because it's invisible because I can't right, see it. <laughs> right. You can't feel it. Right. And you think, hey, I'm OK, you're, but you're not. Yeah. It takes a toll. It takes years and years and years of our bodies to ultimately respond to this. And sometimes it's in a negative way, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. Well, fantastic guys. Um, DefenderShield.com. We've got a discount code biohacks set up for you. If you want to grab blankets, cell phone cases, um, laptop shielding devices, earphones, um, Daniel, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. We appreciate you. It's been a lot of fun having this conversation. And um, I'm going to go see if I can still salvage this TMS appointment that's all the more relevant (laughs) after this discussion. Thank you so much. (laughs) Anthony, thanks so much for having me. I really do appreciate it. What's up, guys? Anthony here. And thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Biohacking Secrets Show. One of my favorite things to do is helping men and women like you feel what it's like with the body you've always wanted and all day energy that starts the moment you wake up and doesn't quit. Over the past decade, we've created a proprietary health assessment that helps me to identify the unique toxicities and deficiencies that may be holding you back from the life that you deserve. And what we've discovered in doing this with now thousands of CEOs, executives, professional athletes, businessmen, Hollywood celebrities, and entrepreneurs is that there's always room for improvement and optimization. Whether you're already performing at a high level or you have that feeling inside your heart that you're capable of more, the single fastest way to unlock your potential is to upgrade your mind and your body. And there's no program on earth that does that faster or to a greater magnitude than our one-on-one consulting program at www.biohackingsecrets.com forward slash coaching. We start with our proprietary health assessment that screens you for vitamin deficiencies like A, D, magnesium, iron, etc., high cholesterol and heart disease, high blood pressure, digestive disorders, hidden infections like Lyme, Epstein-Barr, parasites, SIBO, candida, and more that can just drain your energy in the background, especially if you don't know about them. Anxiety, depression, and cognitive disorders, autoimmune disease, adrenal fatigue, thyroid issues, mold toxicity, heavy metals, environmental toxins, and other genetic risk factors like MTHFR, APOE status, your glutathione production, and many more. We even recommend the specific tests that I use with my one-on-one clients if they're relevant for you in figuring out your biological age and identifying those key areas and opportunities that can take your life to the next level. 
From there, we create a customized game plan along with a personalized supplement protocol to help you optimize your weight and energy at the cellular level. And for our platinum clients, we even include a personalized workshop with me in Delray Beach, Florida. Most of the year, this program's full with a waiting list, but we just had a couple spots open up and I wanted to offer them to the listeners of the Biohacking Secrets show first. So if you're interested in seeing what it might look like for us to work together, head over to www.biohackingsecrets.com forward slash coaching. That's www.biohackingsecrets.com forward slash C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G and fill out the short application form. If you're pre-approved, you'll be given the opportunity to book a time to connect with someone on our team and see if it's a fit. Thank you so much for being a part of this community, and I look forward to potentially going on this journey together. 